Welcome back Titans. Today we are talking mechanism of injury or MOI for the acronym of MVCs, motor vehicle collisions. Now you can use this tutorial, this lecture for, it can be motorcycles, boats, ATVs, semi trucks, uh, sedans, it doesn't matter. We're not specifically talking about how to treat our patients during an MVC. We are using this, uh, these tools to identify the actual scene itself and what can clue you into what's going on with our patient. A lot of the times just looking at a scene, you can tell the amount of damage that's been done to a car with the kinetic energy. You can see different deformities or to the steering column or anything else that's gonna clue you into what potentially has hurt our patient, how we're going to treat that patient. Statistically, real quick, 30,000 Americans are killed annually on the, on the roadways, according to the NHTSA. 2.3 million Americans are injured annually. So if you break that down about two to three million, about 6,500 people daily are injured in motor vehicle collisions. So it's a very prevalent scene you're going to be responding to and being assessing patients and transporting away from. So anytime you are responding to a scene, your original dispatch information starts to cue you in of that information of where you're starting to assess what's going on. We know that if dispatch sends you to a single vehicle versus a tree, we know that there was a rapid deceleration and there's at least one patient in that vehicle. Now, if they send you to three cars, obviously there's probably at least three patients on scene. This is in your scene size up where you wanna start considering additional resources. The geographical location can also be important. Are you responding to a dirt road in a uh, farming area where there's not a lot of buildings or roadways, or is it a major metropolitan area and it's a school bus on its side? So you're starting to formulate all of these ideas in your head and a game plan for you and your partner or your crew when you get on scene to actually assess the car and the patients. So once we are on scene, we are going to look at the vehicle in its entirety. First, we wanna identify that there are no major hazards or life safety issues for you and your crew or your partner. What I like to do is when I first arrive on scene, I'm gonna do a 360 and go all around that vehicle, make sure that there's no immediate hazards or anything that's going to harm us. Maybe the patient needs to be extricated, maybe there's a fluid leak that we need to control for the safety of the actual responders. <clears throat> so when you're looking at the five phases of deceleration, it, let's say we have a vehicle into a tree. So there's gonna be five phases. First is the deceleration of the vehicle, and that occurs when the vehicle strikes another object and is brought to an abrupt stop. So that's the actual vehicle, let's say in our scenario, vehicle versus a tree. That's the first part. The second part is a deceleration of the occupants. Now that the car is hit, now there's a deceleration of the occupants moving forward. There's a deceleration of the internal organs. So now once your patient say hits the steering wheel, now everything's continuing to move. Now the organs are gonna rapidly decelerate. Then we have secondary collisions occur when the occupants inside the vehicle is hit by objects moving within the vehicle. Hopefully your patient it doesn't have a bowling ball collection in the back seat and those are flying forward. And then the fifth and final phase is additional impacts that the vehicle may receive, such as getting hit by a second vehicle or say the, we hit that tree and now the limbs are falling on it or something like that. So those are the five phases of deceleration. So all this should be coming into play and in what you're considering while you're assessing the actual scene itself and what damages could have been done to the patient in the vehicle. Next, we're gonna look at the assessment. So there's what we call structural and body clues and the potential injuries of such. So there's five different types of actual vehicles, um, vehicle wrecks. So we have our front end collision, we have our rear end collision, and then we have our side collision. You can also have a quarter panel strike or an actual rollover, and we'll show some pictures of that here coming up. But we're gonna talk about the main three that you're going to see that are the most prevalent and how they can how the damage to the vehicles can clue you into maybe what's going on with your patient. So we're gonna start on with a, a head-on or a frontal impact. You can see deformed front end uh, of the vehicle, a cracked windshield, maybe a deformed steering column or dashboard. So you know from when we just spoke about the rapid deceleration, that front end impact, the body clues would be bruise or lacerated head to the face. Maybe you have spidering uh, of the windshield, um, bruised neck or chest. 
you could also have a bruised abdomen, knee, or dislocated kneecap, those sorts of things. Because when the rapid deceleration hits and the patient's body continues to go forward, they're going to take the, the brunt of that impact on the front of their body. This could result in brain injury, um, scrapes, cuts, bruises, uh, C-spine injury, uh, myocardial contusion, flailed chest, uh, tamponade even if their chest hits the steering wheel hard enough. So that's kind of the things that you play that picture in your head of what happened and what you're going to find. Second, we're gonna talk about a lateral or side impact collision, also commonly known as a T-bone accident where a vehicle strikes the side of a car. So the structural clues, uh, we have a deformed side of the vehicle, maybe the door smashed in. We have a B post, this is our A post and our B post. Um, maybe the B, B post or pillar is deformed you can have broken doors or windows. Um, now think about your patient sitting in the driver's seat getting into a side collision impact. Now the majority of that kinetic energy is now impacting the side of that vehicle. So we wanna look for intrusion, which is the actual amount of space that the metal has gone into the vehicle. You could have bruised shoulders, bruised uh, uh, pelvis, bruised temple. Um, you could have a clavicle fracture, fractured humerus, uh, bruised arms, or even lacerations to that side. So those would be your body clues. Injuries are like fractured hip, you got brain injuries, C-spine, contusions, lax, all that fun stuff. And it's going to be primarily on the side that took that actual impact. So if you're the driver of this vehicle, it's gonna be on that patient's left side. So you have your structural clues, you have your body clues, what you find on the patient, and that should indicate probably some internal stuff going on. It is important to note that internal injuries are not always obvious. Um, if you have a, a splenic rupture or an appendix rupture or one of your solid organs takes a hit and it's lacerated internally, you have to do a proper assessment of that patient. Look at vital signs, do a, do a rapid head to toe, do a detail and you know really pay attention to what's going on with that patient so you can better treat them. And then we'll talk about the rear end collision. So, same thing, the structural clues of the actual vehicle, maybe a posterior deformity of the automobile, uh, the headrest is not adjusted. Um, the body clues for these would be like secondary anterior injuries, especially if the patient was unrestrained. And then those body clues could lead you into, okay, now maybe we have whiplash from the rapid deceleration with the, with the head moving forward, uh, bleeding, bruising, or tearing inside of the skull. These are all found in your Nancy Caroline book, the uh, second volume in the Trauma Systems and Mechanisms of Injury. So there are your structural clues for your vehicle, the body clues that you would find on your patient, and then what, what may be happening with, as far as actual internal or external injuries. So we've looked at our vehicle, we've done our 360, we've identified, man, is this minor, moderate, or severe damage to this vehicle? Was it a head-on collision? any of those sorts of things. Now you're playing like Sherlock Holmes and you're trying to do a little investigation for, to better treat our patient and what do we need to do for the patient. So those are our clues. And then finally, after we've identified the structural clues, the body clues, we've done our patient assessment, maybe we need to take this patient to a trauma center for destination. Will this patient, based on the clues that we found and the injuries that we found and they're either stable or unstable, should we take them to a normal ER, freestanding ER, or maybe they need a specialty care unit like a trauma center where they have uh, level one, level two trauma center, any of that sorts of things. Or maybe you need to fly that patient out depending on the distance and severity of that patient or the needs of that patient. So get on scene, look at the vehicle, look, uh, look at the diagnostics of the clues from the structure, consider the kinetic energy that was impacted on that patient, do the best for your patient, and I'll see you on the next one.